This is one of the cheapest Gibsons they've ever made. To be fair, it's completely grounded in history, but this one's a little bit more special than all the rest. It was a radio contest prize. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. We're talking about the late 2007-2008 Gibson Melody Maker today. It's the shape of a Les Paul, but it's got a Stratocaster single coil pickup in it, and that's all you've got. This is based on the late 50s Gibson Melody Maker, so let's do a little bit of recapped history. In 1959, you had a Les Paul Custom, absolute top of the line gorgeous thing, then one step below is the Les Paul Standard. But if you were a student and couldn't afford those, your next options were a Les Paul Special with two P90s, or you could try out the Junior. And if you're wondering why they're double cuts, well, that's just when they made the change. There were Les Paul shaped ones before that, but even below there was the new Melody Maker. We've actually documented one of these on the show before. The early ones have a wider single coil that sounds a bit more P90-like, but they later revise it to a slightly thinner one, but those are gorgeous guitars. Still a great way to get a 59 Les Paul in a roundabout way, even yet today. And the Melody Maker line persisted throughout the 60s, although with some changes into a double cutaway shape and then a freaky fish and then we went to the sg and then eventually we get like the sg 100 sg1 series before the melody makers just kind of go away with some brief reissuings in the 70s but those are actually like really nice high end but i think we're getting too far past the point they wanted to bring these back in the late 2000s and bring them back they did check out the box these things originally came with it's such a beautiful 50s styling it's got all the correct fonts it looks exactly like how you could imagine it would be back Back in the 50s so there's some mild collector value to factory sealed ones or versions that still have the box and the bulk majority of them were in a similar sunburst finish they have multi-piece mahogany bodies you've got a mahogany neck rosewood fretboard everything seems on the up and up here they're still usa made they were just a little bit less expensive because well very bare bones. And this was really just the beginning for Gibson because they kept pumping out tons and tons of melody makers, such as in 2011 introducing a humbucker equipped version instead of the single coil. And my all time favorite is the 2014 Gibson melody maker because it's got the full sized headstock. Actually still has a maple top, it's carved, but still nice and thin. You can check out this review and demo for more. But ever since seeing those cool boxes, I've always wanted to check one of these out, but I just figured it's probably not that good because usually when Gibson creates budget guitars made in the USA, they have to sacrifice too much to the point where it's embarrassing to still have their name on the headstock. Gibson's last foray into this was the Firebird Zero and SG Fusion, etc. back around 2017-ish. So I'm excited to check this out to actually give it a run through. Honestly, it doesn't feel that bad <laughs> straight out of the case. However, this one's a little bit more special. You might notice it's white and we've got this Jonas Brothers decal on it. That's right, we got all three Jonas Brothers signed this guitar. What is the story? These were promotional items in 2008. Jonas Brothers were on tour, they were doing radio contests, you call them in, do whatever their shenanigans are, and then you've got the chance to win the grand prize signed Joe Bro guitar. Fantastic, and there was such demand behind these, this actually became a real signature guitar. But it didn't look like this, it looked like this. And it's one of my favorite versions of the Gibson Melody Maker. They were produced in 2010 in limited numbers. They have a slightly nicer satin white finish to them. Like this one, it's very open pour. You can still see the wood grain. Those, they had it a little bit more of a completely flat white. But it had two P90 pickups, ebony fretboard, full-sized headstock. Those things have no right to be a spec as well as they do. So occasionally people will make projects out of those. But in 2011, they re-released it as the Gibson Melody Maker Special without the Jonas Brothers branding, and you get a whole plethora of colors. Although, unfortunately, you lost the ebony fretboard. And I just found this one on eBay. It was listed as a prototype in the title. I, I fell for the bait, clicked on the listing, and it's like... I don't know if I'd necessarily call this a prototype, but it certainly predates the real signature model, and it likely had some influence on them actually creating that. So I figure 
yeah, we need to document this version too. And if you're not familiar with who the Jonas Brothers are, they got their start on Disney Channel. They had their whole show, teenage heartthrob stuff. But then later their solo careers and how they did their own works, they actually have some very popular songs that you might know. Let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench, pop the hood, see what's making it tick, and then we'll plug it in and see how good a Gibson single coil light sound. I'm scared. On the workbench, let's go ahead and see what is hiding underneath this giant pick guard. A little bit disappointed, you don't have much modification room on these. It is routed quite simply for a single coil pickup and that's it. So if you wanted to put something else in here, you'd have to do a stacked single coil or a really nice Fender Custom Shop single coil. Because to fit a P90 or a humbucker in here, you would have to route the body. Which isn't a problem if that's what you want to do, but that's a permanent modification. You also have to have a nice router to put it up here for your neck if you want to add the neck pickup. However, if you look at the actual signature one, it's got humbucker routes hiding underneath it. And those P90s, they're not actually soap bar P90s. They're dog ear P90s disguised as soap bars. So that's another difference between the models. But here you can see all the route. It's marked WW for Warren White, then Melody Maker PL. I'm not sure what the PL stands for. But here's what our electronics look like. Vaguely similar to what you'd find in like the Nighthawk series. They're supposed to be ceramic magnets. I really don't know what to expect out of this. I came into this guitar thinking it's going to sound like hot trash. So if it's even remotely nice, I'm going to be happy. Because that's the thing with these really cheap Gibson Melody Maker and similar guitars from these eras, even from the M2 series. If you go into them with the right mindset, you're going to have a lot of fun. But if you think, I'm getting a Les Paul Standard for 500 bucks, you're going to have a bad time. But it's just a regular Gibson branded pots, master volume, master tone, single output jack on the front. Thought it's worth mentioning that the pickguard seems to be yellowing the finish. So you can kind of see an outline of where that is. That single coil reads 4.66k ohms. And if you're thinking, oh cool, the Jonas Brothers actually had this guitar in their hands and signed it. Highly unlikely. This is just a whole unit that they can slap on the top of the guitar. I'm sure they just signed like 20 or so of these sent them back to Gibson, then Gibson put them on and sent them out to the radio stations that they wanted them to be in. What's even worse is this still has the plastic protector film over top of it. So eventually, with enough time, this is going to start peeling up by itself and you'll lose the signatures. You can see right here where the clear film has actually been picked off. And it looks like we've got some slight oily contamination underneath it. I'm not sure. As far as the signatures itself, it's Joe, Nick, and Kevin. I would assume that's Nick, Joe. I don't know how you get Kevin out of that, but feel free to fill me in, super hardcore Jonas Brothers fans. I was really curious if this was like an afterthought, like they just slapped it over the finish as like a sticker, or is it actually under it? And to me, this looks like it's underneath the clear coat. So there is at least a little bit of planning behind this before they took that and made it huge and covered the entire body. I can totally appreciate this guitar will not be for everyone, but it's worth documenting anyway. And as far as the condition of this one, you can see there's like a little bit of discoloration there. There's a couple of nicks and dings. After I won the auction for this, the seller reached out to me and said, hey, I didn't do a very good job disclosing all the wear. And he showed me some photos of the nicks and dings. He gave me the opportunity to back out if I wanted to. But this was just one of those situations where it's like, eh, whatever, I'll, I'll still take it. This area right here where it wore through the finish just a tad was maybe the most sad. But now that I have it in my hands, it's honestly not that noticeable. And here's a look at the tailpiece. It's nothing fancy. You don't have the lightning bar for intonation adjustment. You just have your set screws here to rock it back and forth to get it as best as you can. Props to the seller, he gave me a gig bag, which I thought was going to be just like a cloth covering, but holy cow, that's more of like a soft, hard case. And oh my goodness, there was case candy in it. I wonder if he watches the show. Got a homestarrunner.com sticker in here. It's either that or he saw my eBay username and got a kick out of it. It almost seems to be a drink coaster. I think I might be right because you can see some drink staining on the other side. This might have been worth the price I paid. Here's what our pre-packed checklist looks like and a surprisingly beefy owner's manual. In this era, you gotta remember, they were starting to do all the crazy roboto stuff, so they had to include that within their owner's manuals. So that's when you get additional pages for that stuff. But if you're curious about the depth of the body, it's about 1.4 inches. Complete slab body. There's no comfort cuts or anything like that. 
But moving on from our three-piece mahogany body, I've got that mahogany neck and the rosewood fretboard. I did go ahead and condition this, and I'm going to change the strings because I'm pretty confident those were the original strings from 2008 on this thing. They were pretty gnarly. However, I decided to strum around on this just a little bit before I tore it apart, and my goodness, this thing is a resonant beast. I always look down on this particular version of the Melody Maker, but now I all of a sudden have high hopes, even if this thing sounds like garbage, because that's kind of what the original Melody Makers are like too, unless you get the early wide single coil pickup. They just don't sound that great, but they're fantastic couch guitars. I measure 0.85 first fret neck depth, of which increases to 0.97 by the 12th, with a width of nearly 1.7 inches, and up by the 12th, 2.08. I feel it fits most closely into Gibson's 50s neck profile, but remember, we're not talking 50s custom shop, we're talking Gibson USA 50s style. So just a nice roundedness without being overly thick. I call it more of a medium neck profile. I think guys who like 60s necks or 50s necks would be able to find a happy medium here. There's a look at that neck profile at the 1st fret and the 12th fret, so you can kind of see what we're talking about here. Now we've got that 12 inch fretboard radius, and iconic 24 3 quarter inch scale. Here's our goofy headstock. It's an acquired taste. The first time you see it, you're going to be like, yeah, but it does grow on you. Basically, what this is, is the regular Gibson headstock, but without the wings that forms the full open book shape and the full width. So you can technically do Melody Maker conversions if you really want to. But it's just a regular Gibson silk screen. And they put those vintage Inspire tuners on it with the modern screw-on bushings. Truss rod looks peachy, and it's just a straight black truss rod cover. Now I've got it strung back up. I can talk about the setup. Well, if you try to take it any lower than this, it just becomes a buzzy mess. So I would consider this medium to medium low style action. It's comfortable since it's a slightly larger neck profile, but if you want like super ultra low action, eh, you're going to have to do a little bit more work. And now we flip on over to the back. Um... It's a top routed guitar. I don't really have much to show you back here. You don't even have an output jack on the side. Just our little strap buttons in our usual locations. However, it is very easy to see the seam lines of the body on the back. As you can see, all the wood grain right here doesn't match perfectly with this really ringy piece over there. And then you get more of what you had on the other side. So if you know what you're looking for, yeah, you can see the three pieces just fine. But we've got a little bit of finish wear along our neck heel. That might have even happened at the factory. And since these are satin finishes, it's real easy to wear through the finish on the neck on these. Although, I will say this one appears to still be intact for the most part. And here's the backside of our headstock. Gibson Clusen Deluxe Tuners with the button tips and our serial number dating it to the 119th day of 2008. Production number 37 with a small rub area right there. And all said and done, the pre-Jonas Brothers signature model weighs 6 pounds, 11.1 ounces. Not too shabby for a couch guitar. Let's plug it in and hope for the best. This is better than I was expecting. It only has a little bit of single coil hum to it. It's really hot. Like a little bit too hot. So I find rolling that tone down to about a seven or so rounds it out.
I'm not afraid to admit it. I have misjudged these 2007, 2008 Melody Makers. I just thought they were a gimmick and I always hated the way this pickup looked on them because the originals did not have the pull pieces showing. But this was a fantastic guitar. It was not as bad as I was expecting. That single coil, dare I say it, honestly sounds okay. <laughs> now you do have to tame it with your tone control, but there's a lot that you can coax out of this. It's not necessarily just a one trick pony. Now as far as the fine detailed setup and dressing of the frets and having the nut the perfect height, not exactly, but if I remember correctly, these are like, what, 400-ish brand new back then? Something like that. The baseline level of this, not this makeshift Jonas brother signature. So if you can find one of these used in that four to $500 range, yeah, pick it up. I think you'd have a lot of fun. And I gotta be careful about some of the later melody makers because they start to use like not mahogany. I'm not saying that those ones are bad either. I've just learned you, you can't really judge a book by its cover anymore. I had a lot of fun with this, but I also went into it with managed expectation. If you're paying the $1,200 asking price some people have on these regular ones, you're probably not gonna have as much fun, but you know, like 500 bucks, as I said, you're gonna have a good time. As far as the fate of this one, I don't know. I just really like that Weezer song. I, I know it's not theirs, but it always makes me smile when I see a Jonas Brothers signature melody maker. So. This one's got a unique enough of a story. I'm gonna hold it back for the collection because why not? I can't imagine that there's that many of the radio contest ones out there. Because the only one I could find posted online was this exact same one. It's just changed hands a few different times. So I hope you guys enjoyed this October spooktacular special of a Melody Maker dressed up as the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> All right, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.